Sure. So I think you know P53 likely represents the molecular subgroup with the very poorest of outcomes. And I think really what the presentation's highlighting is we really need to think about this group by itself. Unfortunately, all our standard of care therapies, intensive chemotherapy, HMA venetoclax have not improved the outcomes. And thus really focusing on this group is uh, quite critical. So there are ways to sort of rapidly identify those patients with P53 immunohistochemistry, MDS fish tests, um, increased ring sideroblasts. These can potentially help um, identify identify these patients rapidly. I think at the same time, there are sort of these different classification systems that there's a lot of discussion, both the ICC and the WHO. This may be most relevant in the P53 setting where really all patients with 5% blast or greater really have uniformly poor outcomes. So again, what's sort of on the horizon? So APR or epronetopopt was really a, a very promising drug for this group of patients. Unfortunately, the phase three MDS study was negative. Um, I do present um, actually some updated data on the triplet APR, venetoclax, azacitidine, as well as post transplant data. We have some actually exciting data that we could potentially combine it with Eltonexor, uh, which is an XPO1 inhibitor. Um, but again, I think the future of that drug is a little bit challenging given the negative phase three MDS study. I think really where the most excitement is right now is with megrolimab um, and two ongoing phase three studies, including a uh, pivotal uh, enhanced two trial, which is focused on the P53 mutant AML group that's really looking at azomegrolimab versus azobenetoclax. It's an open label study, but OS is the primary endpoint of that trial.